You know that feeling, right? That absolute dread when you're miles away from home and you find out your critical server, the very heart of your home lab, has just gone completely dark. A reboot does nothing. Well, that's the horror story we're diving into today. The curious case of the vanishing SSD. This just nails that sinking feeling, doesn't it? One minute, everything's running perfectly, and the next, your most important machine has just, well, it's ghosted you, leaving you totally in the dark. And that's really the heart of the mystery we're trying to solve. The main NVMe SSD, the one holding all of your important virtual machines and containers, has completely vanished from the system. It's not that it's failing, it's like it was never even there to begin with. All right, let's get into the details here. Here are the facts of the case. We're looking at a Dell T5810, and it's running Proxmox. The storage setup is a PCIe card with three out of four slots filled with NVMe drives. And our victim? It's that main SSD. The really weird part, the main symptom, is that this drive just disappears at random. And the only thing that brings it back, at least for a little while, is a full-on power cycle. We're talking unplugging the whole machine and plugging it back in. So, what in the world is going on? See, this isn't just a simple hardware failure. This is a full-blown whodunit. So our job is to follow the clues, line up the suspects, and figure out what's really behind this disappearing act. Let's start the investigation. So, like any good detective, we're going to start by lining up the usual suspects. You know, the most likely culprits. Is it just a bad drive? A weird software setting? We got to start with the most common and obvious reasons for a failure like this one. And this is always suspect number one, right? Is the hardware itself just giving up the ghost? I mean, a failing SSD is the simplest explanation, so it's absolutely the first theory we need to put to the test. Okay, so to gather some evidence, the first thing you're going to do is run a smart control command to check the drive's health. Now you got to remember, Proxmox, especially if you're using ZFS, can be incredibly tough on consumer-grade SSDs. It's just writes and writes and writes. So if you see something crazy like 90% wear after just a year or two, that is a huge red flag. In this particular case, the drive was a Fong Xiong NVMe. So while it's possible it was failing, it's not our smoking gun. We can't be sure. All right, let's move on to our next suspect. And this one is a lot sneakier. Could a power-saving feature, something buried deep inside the BIOS, actually be the cause of all this chaos? Let's talk about something called ASPM, or Active State Power Management. It's designed to save a little bit of power by putting your PCIe devices into a low-power state when they're not busy. The problem is, some SSDs just don't wake up from that state correctly. They go to sleep and never come back, dropping right off the system. And here's the really crucial clue. It has this bizarre quirk where it can affect just one drive on a card that has multiple SSDs. That makes it a prime suspect when only a single drive is acting up. Okay, our third suspect is good old-fashioned system overload. What if we're simply asking too much from the server's motherboard? Is it possible the whole PCIe bus is just overcrowded? So think of it like this. Your motherboard has a limited number of PCIe lanes. They're basically data highways. If you start plugging in multiple GPUs, a bunch of network cards, and a full array of NVMe drives, you can create a massive traffic jam. Devices get starved for bandwidth, and that can lead to some really weird stuff like random disconnects and unexplained hardware failures. Sounds familiar, right? So we've looked at the usual suspects. A failing drive, a weird BIOS setting, maybe an overloaded system. But what happens when none of those seem to be the clear villain? Well, now it's time to dig a little deeper for the culprits that are often overlooked because they seem almost too simple. And this is a fundamental rule of troubleshooting. Seriously, before you go down a rabbit hole of obscure logs and complex software fixes, you have to check the physical world. The solution might be something you can literally see and touch. So, here's your two-minute drill. First, power everything down and physically reseat the card. Over months and years, tiny vibrations and heat cycles can cause a card to wiggle just loose enough to break the connection. Second, check for heat. NVMe drives can get incredibly hot, and if you don't have good airflow, they can overheat and just shut themselves down to stay safe. I love this anecdote from the source material because it's just so simple and perfect. After who knows how many hours of complicated software troubleshooting, the fix was a $10 fan pointed right at the hardware. You should never, ever underestimate the power of good cooling. And that brings us to our final sneaky culprit, power. If you're using cable splitters or daisy chaining power connectors, especially for hungry components like GPUs, you can cause the voltage to become unstable. 
that instability can then ripple through your system and cause sensitive little things like an NVMe drive to drop out. The solution is dead simple. One dedicated cable for each power-hungry device. All right, we've identified all our suspects, from the really obvious to the super sneaky. Now, let's pull it all together into a concrete action plan. This is where we solve the case and give you the exact tools you need to fix it yourself. Here it is, your eight-step troubleshooting plan. First, check that drive health with Smart CTL and make sure the SSD's firmware is up to date. Then, move on to the physical checks. Reseat the card and all the drives, and maybe even add a small fan for direct cooling. If that doesn't fix it, it's time to dive into the BIOS and disable ASPM. Still having issues? Try freeing up some PCIe lanes by pulling out any extra cards you don't absolutely need. And make sure you're using separate power cables. Finally, to help your drive live longer, you can reduce writes by moving system logs to RAM. With the case officially closed, it's time for one last look inside the detective's notebook. What are the big lessons we can take away from all this? These are the bits of wisdom you'll want to remember for your own tech adventures down the road. You know, the most important takeaway here is to always, always start with the simple physical stuff. Checking for a loose card or a heat issue can literally save you from hours or even days of painful debugging. And remember, every extra component you add is another potential point of failure. That's why it's so critical to monitor your hardware, maybe keep some spares on hand, and most importantly of all, please have a rock solid backup plan. And it really all boils down to this. So many of these tech mysteries that look like complex software bugs or some kind of weird kernel panic are actually just simple, physical problems in disguise. A loose connection, a component getting too hot, a bad cable. Always check the physical world first. And so I'll leave you with this one final question to think about. As you look at your own setup, your own lab, what's that one simple physical thing? That kind of loose cable, that dusty fan, that overcrowded power strip that maybe you've overlooked? It might just be the solution to your next big tech mystery.